Hey guys, I just want to upload a video to kind of touch on some of the concepts I mentioned on volatility and uh, also incorporate 618 retracements into that discussion. And uh, in the video I uploaded yesterday night, I sort of marked off the, you know, the compression and volatility we're seeing in the context of the higher time frame uh, Bitcoin macro chart. Right now I'm looking at a daily chart on Bitcoin USD and just to, I know I've mentioned this previously, but just to go over it again, uh, you see a break of structure here, price uh, changes behavior, stops making lower lows and lower highs, starts making higher highs, takes out this high, takes out that high, retraces, sets in a lower, higher low relative to this low, comes up, sets in a lower high relative to this high. Um, and then I marked off the this low and this high is where you see that uh, volatility uh, start to compress, right? So you see this very, very aggressive expansion of volatility to the downside. Uh, where I believe interest rates uh, hikes were getting priced into the market. And then you see a uh, break of structure and a, you know, not, not essentially the same uh, trending move, but a very expansion of volatility counter trend. And then you see uh, this compression of volatility into a, uh, you know, your, your higher low, lower high setup. And I just, uh, so I marked off this low and this high is, is that uh, area where the range really begins to compress. And I drew a 618 over that, so um, you probably see it a little bit better on the four-hour chart. But yeah, essentially you uh, come down here, hit your 618 retracement, come up, hit this bearish retracement, and you can see how it's creating this narrowing range. Um, you could probably even go down and draw fibs off here uh, on the lower time frames if you really want to get in the weeds with it. Um, but the concept I want to point out here is we're in an area where the higher time frames is they're compressing into the lower time frames right so we hit a and this is really interesting because you know th these situations don't occur often i mean you generally have to have a lot of patience and wait a long time until you see this type of behavior um, but we're seeing it right now um, so that's got me really excited for what the market's going to do in the next few weeks and uh, really really excited to be in the market and uh, trading and paying attention to price action right now uh, so we've got our weekly level and then our daily level, see, it's just compressing uh, one by one from the higher time frames down to the lower time frames. And these are the type of situations where the lower time frames are much more significant. You know, assuming that they're in line with uh, whatever your high time frame bias is that you're establishing. And uh, here, uh, I want to also point out the area where the FOMC data release hit the market. And... Uh, essentially uh, hit the market roughly uh, 2.30, roughly 2 o'clock, 2.30 New York time. Essentially this low right here. Uh, you can see this is uh, New York time. Uh, we'll put this in the context of uh, what, we're, what we were looking at earlier. So yeah, so you you have the compression in, in, in price, and then price kind of starts uh, coiling around the midpoint of this compressed range. And then you see on the lower time frames, at least, of course, it's insignificant on the higher time frames, but on the lower time frames, you see that compression that I mean, here price is extremely compressed. And then it starts to unwind a little bit. And uh, that's the area where you can get down and, you know, get down on those low time frames and try to get a good entry. And it, it gives you the opportunity to manage risk very tightly. Um, so here you see, you know, volatility is increasing in it, you know, in a, as we approach FOMC. Technically, the FOMC was going on here, but the official data release I'm marking off is this level right here. And so we hit that point this afternoon. I just go down to a three minute chart. Again, the time frame, you know, it doesn't matter. It could be three minute, four minute, five minute, whatever. Um, but here's essentially uh, that 2.30 New York time. FOMC uh, data hits the market, and uh, you can see uh, price sort of reacts off that level and uh, starts running for the highs. Now, uh, I would conceptualize this area here as a price swing, and however you conceptualize a price swing in your trading methodology, uh, I would I would do that here, and I would I would use this low as the uh, the the low that you're anchoring that price swing to. And then whatever price distinctions you want to trade in here, um, you know, uh, that's different for everybody. But essentially, you know, uh, for the current price, uh, 
uh, maybe maybe you were playing really tight to the market and you saw this initial move up, or maybe you entered right here and you've got a better entry. Uh, but essentially, you could use this uh, low to manage risk on this uh, this low time frame idea, and that's uh, essentially you know now it's so price is uh, relatively extended, but not extended in the context of what's going on on the larger time frames, right? If this if this area breaks up, then that two thousand dollars of risk is uh, is not really that significant. It could you know, probably reach for these highs relatively, at least in the intermediate term. So you're looking at a, you know, a, a 20 to one or 15 to one risk to reward trade uh, when you get this type of volatility compression. And of course, the uh, the same thing is true to the downside, right? If, if volatility expands to the downside, then you probably see price uh, run from the 41,000 level to somewhere below these lows here. So roughly a $15,000 move or around that area. Um, yeah, again, anyway, I hope you guys like this video and uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you like this content. Uh, I'll be posting more upload, uploads to the Trading Journal series soon. Um, I'm just documenting live trades and taking what I'm thinking in real time and, and uh, the type of things I'm looking out for in the market in, you know, in the next coming days, weeks, and months as well.